Okay guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to try to repair this TDI uh, dyna load. Uh, this thing is a uh, 1.5 kilowatt load and uh, I fished it out of the trash. I'm pretty confident it doesn't work. The uh, reject uh, tag on here says it draws current with no load applied. So uh, unless they had the reverse polarity on there and uh, just didn't really check what they were doing, good chances are this thing is actually broken and we'll get to do a repair on it. Uh, the last couple of pieces of test equipment I've got really weren't broken, so I didn't get to do videos on them. I kind of wanted some stuff to fix, and eh, they just worked, which is uh, such a problem to have, you know. Uh, but yeah, this uh, this this one we're actually going to do a repair here, um, and uh, yeah, these things are really robust loads. They're very old. They're designed in the late 70s. Uh, and produced for quite a number of years, so there's a lot of them out in in the world. Uh, they are uh, very old school in their design, as it's all op amps um, and uh, transistors. No, no MOSFETs in here. <laughs> there's not a MOSFET to be seen. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's very kind of analog, and um, it's it's actually pretty simple if you really uh, if you can read the schematic. Problem I have is the copy of the manual that I have is a is on the is one that I got off the internet and it's a little bit blurry. So if anybody has an original manual to one of these TDI uh, loads, especially this particular model, because the other models are some pretty good copies out there, but the uh, the fifty one twenty. Uh, 1500. But yeah, the schematic portion of the one that I was able to find online, it's really blurry. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and actually get into this repair, tear this thing down, and see what we see inside. Uh, Alright, so let's take a quick look at this load before we open it up for repair. Uh, so this is the TDI 5120 uh, 1500, uh, which that breaks down to 50 volts, 120 amps, uh, or uh, 1.5 kilowatts. Uh, you have a couple of different modes it'll run in. You have a resistive mode, a constant current mode, uh, and then you have a pulse load and the um, EXT mod. And then you also have the constant voltage mode. All right, well, let's uh, tear into this thing. First thing I'm noticing, let me bring the camera around. All right, the first thing I'm noticing is it looks like the uh, thermal switch had broken off of here and they just kind of patched it uh, like that. So the fans are gonna run uh, all the time on this thing. Okay, so I have it plugged in, uh, but before we apply power, let's just uh, check and make sure that the there's um, not a short across this. Uh, if there was a short across just this, then uh, it would be the um, uh, reverse polarity diode there that I would suspect. Um, however, let's see. So nope, we're we're in the mega ohms. So that's definitely not going to be uh, the problem. It is not this diode. We won't see a short across all of these BJTs in this state because um, this solenoid here uh, kind of isolates it or contact or whatever you want to call it. It looks a lot like a car starter solenoid. So since uh, this guy's good, let's uh, just go ahead and before we put a power to it, uh, check and see if we have a short here, at least a dead short across it. Uh, it doesn't look like we have a dead short. Uh, 1K seems a little bit low to me. Um, but it's not a dead short across the uh, whole rail. Uh, I'm not sure what if, if 1K is normal or not. It, to me, that seems low, but uh, maybe that's normal. Um, let's go ahead and apply power. So I guess the first thing we should do when we power it on is confirm that we do, in fact, have a problem. Um, so I'm going to put a uh, power supply on the... Uh, load terminals. The uh, terminals are actually in the back there. I'm just, this is just the bus bar that they come out on. All right, so let's turn on the load. Um, and put on the output of our power supply. And yes, we're going into constant current there. So let's turn off the load. Uh, so that's with the load off, 12 volts. And then we're pulling the full four amps uh, 
out. So yeah, it does seem like the logic board is functioning. Let me back the camera up so that way we can see some of the logic. So we go into uh, constant resistive mode and it, it uh, came up there. Uh, we can go into our constant current. We can turn on the pulse load. Um, and yeah, we do seem to have logic with it. And uh, it does seem to be measuring properly there. So let's uh, put the voltmeter on too. Yep, yeah, one volt, 1 1.6, yep, that's about right. Um, so yeah, it, it definitely appears that the um, uh, logic is working. So this board may or may not be working properly. We'll, uh, we'll dig more into this. Okay, so, so um, let's try to find the short here. Uh, I, I'm gonna guess it's in the power section of the load or the load section of the load and uh, not the logic. But uh, we'll we'll kind of probe around and see see if we find any good hints here. So uh, one of the main things we can keep in mind here is that this is going to be the main one of the main rails uh, of the load itself. These red ones are going to be the other kind of main rail there. Okay, so there we have a short, and let's just check the other. All right, there's a short across that one, and again across this one. So all three of these have a short on them. Uh, I'm gonna stop recording for a second because uh, there's big heat sinks with a lot of screws and another panel on the bottom. So let me get the uh, heat sinks off of there and get them unscrewed and take I didn't it. get it in the very first try, even though it looks like that right now. Um, I actually took all three off. Uh, it's just no point in recording it. So yeah, the bad one magically marked itself uh, bad, uh, but no, uh, I just checked it off video. But the way I uh, check them is with one of these uh, cheap transistor testers. They're, they're not perfect, but it'll definitely at least let you know if a uh, transistor's working or not. Um, give you a good idea there. So uh, just to give you an idea of what these, how these things work, you just uh, attach all three leads where they go and run test and this one says self test um, so uh, well it so it thought I might be doing a self test it realized that no it's just a component uh, and it was a bad component so let's take a look at what a good one will look like on the uh, tester here All right. so then it shows uh, kind of your base information of, of your uh, transistor here um, obviously I wouldn't trust, uh, all of these numbers to be perfectly accurate with, uh, these things, but they're definitely good enough to, uh, get you started and also to verify, um, that parts are compatible with each other. So this one is a Harris, um, and it is a 2N5039 that went bad on us. So let's go ahead and just place in our new one. Flip it back over and verify and that yep, we don't short have. seems to be gone. So um, let's go through all three of them, even though they all seem to be in parallel. I actually have not looked over the schematic. I, I know I have it available to me, uh, but uh, I really have not looked at it yet. I'm, I'm making an assumption that these three kind of drive the banks um, of the load here. I, I think that's a, a fair assumption to make. However, yeah, I haven't looked at the schematic to verify that that is, in fact, what the three of those do. But that's how a lot of linear power supplies work. And this, like my coworker said, this thing just looks like a uh, a linear power supply. It's just in reverse. The uh, the output stage is the input. Um, yeah, uh, it looks like this may work like this. So uh, we'll go ahead and plug it in and see if it lets the magic smoke out. Well, the DC power source is plugged back into it again, set to uh, 12 volts, four amps. Uh, let's turn this thing on and see if it lets the smoke out. Hopefully not. All right. And okay, now let's output. All right, and we are no longer in constant current there. We are out of range there because we're at 12 volts. Uh, yeah, that reads 12 volts and we are in resistive mode. So let's see if we can slowly bring this up until we hit the constant current. 
we definitely aren't getting five amps uh, out of it. That's uh, barely making it up there. Uh, let's put it in the 30 amp range. All right, well, that only gave us an amp, so we definitely have something else still wrong with yeah, it. Yeah, with it turned all the way up in the 30 amps per volt, we're only getting um, 1.6 amps. So definitely, uh, definitely still not working right. We're gonna have to figure out um, why we don't have enough drive here to uh, to fully load it down. Okay, so I actually have another clue of what our problem is here. So let's uh, set it into the pulse uh, mode and turn on the load and turn it up. And sure enough, uh, if we use pulse mode, it works because you can see the voltage dip and the current go up here on the ammeter. All right, and then let's also put it in constant uh, voltage mode and bring that up until we hit our 12 volts or so. And so yeah, we start to try to be constant voltage. So we know it's actually a logic issue. The load itself is now working now that we replaced the uh, bad transistor in there. However, we have a logic issue with the constant current and constant resistive. Um, but it's not going to be a drive issue. It's not, it's not the drive side of the logic board. It's going to be the actual logic itself. Uh, so the easiest plan of attack is to actually let's pull all those op amps off and just reseat them because they are socketed in there. And this thing has probably been sitting around for 10, 15 years. Um, so, I mean, sure, the uh, reject on here was from 2023. Uh, however... I know they just pulled some of these out of the shed to test them and see if they were working or not. And so this one was probably one that was already broken out in the shed and they just kind of shoved it back out there. So it, it definitely was not stored in a great environment. Um, so we'll, we'll start with uh, just a simple attack there and uh, going after uh, just corrosion on those op amps. Um, see if see if that's it uh probably not the most likely thing we may have a shorted out cap on there um or a bad resistor but let's just start with the easiest and uh see if that gets us going okay so what i'm using right here is deoxid um and then i'm just going to take a brush and brush all of the uh, op amps down with a little bit of deoxid on the um legs there. Uh, so just brush them all real quick. And then uh, we'll turn over the board and get the connectors too since we already have it apart. Um, just hit the connectors. I can definitely see a little bit of corrosion on that particular connector there. And then we'll do the interconnect down here as well. Um, and that should really kind of clear up any oxidation that might be the problem uh, with these we're going to want to lift them a little bit you don't have to take them all the way out just lift them a little bit and push them back down uh, just to break any corrosion that might be building up and get the deoxid in between um, on there so yeah we'll just kind of give those a little wiggle in their seat there put it back on all right so let's uh, go ahead and give it a little test here so we'll turn it back on um turn the load on and turn up uh yeah it looks like it's working now uh yep that's uh that'll go all the way up so um yeah that uh, that does appear to be working uh so also what we did there was reseat the uh op amp so it looks like yeah co corrosion either on the connectors or the op amps uh was our problem uh we can't get down below an amp on here um so that may be something I'll revisit, um, but uh, it would be nice to revisit that. That may, uh, that may be something that I can calibrate. I'll have to read the calibration procedure on this uh, and see if at this point we can now just calibrate this down to having no load uh, at um, uh, when it's all the way down. Um, definitely seems to be probably like an offset that needs to, to be adjusted there. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, hey, this, this seems to be working. Uh... Okay, so I looked over the calibration procedure and I think I know which one I need to adjust to uh, fix my problem here. Um, it mentions it as just a note that uh, R67 is used to set the low side uh, of the current and that R32 is used to set the high side, um, but it doesn't really go into any detail about adjusting this. So if anybody knows anything more about these or has a more legible um, schematic, because my schematic is super illegible, so I'm not 100% sure uh, what's going on right here. Um, but uh, it does look like this is the right one. So uh, maybe if you know more about these, comment down below and let me know. Uh, but it looks like the offset is how I set the low side here. Okay, so with the load on and the potentiometer for setting the load all the way down, we're drawing 1.68 amps. So let's try adjusting this offset and we'll just, uh, I'm not sure which direction to go. Okay, that way is going up. So let's go this way. Um, and we're going to go all the way until it reaches zero and then go back up until it starts to read a little bit and then just go down. We just want to get it like right there. So that should be right on it. Um, yeah, that looks like that's re really, that gets us to where we're not drawing anything, but we're also not wasting uh, space. So now I can turn up my potentiometer and then bring it back down. And sure enough, we are able to uh, bring it all the way down to zero. So yeah, it looks like... Um, taking those op amps out may have kind of changed the calibration on this. And so we had to uh, kind of somewhat recal it. I I'm sure these displays are not quite linear anymore. Uh, it's got quite a bit of age on this unit, um, but I would never really be trusting my voltage or current reading on this. I wouldn't take calibrated measurements off of my load. Uh, I would just use it for uh, for a load and actually have like a current shun. So to recap what we've done, we replaced uh, Q, uh, Q130 on here and we took all of the op amps out, reseated them and cleaned them with some deoxid and uh, just adjusted the offset uh, calibration there and all the features seem to work. So we can now load it down. Um, that power supply that I'm using will only go up to five amps. Uh, and this thing will do 120 amps. I do have some bigger power supplies. Maybe we will bust out the bigger power supplies another day uh, and run it up to maybe somewhere around 67 amps instead um, and just make some heat. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna put this thing back together. I don't think there's any need to show you guys how to screw back in a lid, so I'm not gonna waste your time on that. Uh, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this repair video. I really like working on this old test equipment and just getting you know, test equipment back up and running, especially stuff that uh, I was able to just fish out of the trash and <laughs> uh, basically got uh, way overkill of a load. Uh, I mean, that's a huge step up from this guy, which is uh, only 200 watts. So I went from having uh, a 200 watt limit on stuff I can load down to having a 1.5 kilowatt. So uh, this one's a little bit lower voltage. We can only go to 50 volts while that can do 150 volts. Um, but this can do 120 amps. So, uh, you know, different applications for the two. Uh, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to have this. Um, I don't know when we'll see it on the channel again, but I'm, I'm pretty confident we will see it because I want to get into doing some batteries and this will be great for draining down some batteries, uh, and using, using this really to, to test battery packs and do that. So, uh, this would actually be very helpful for something that, it is something I plan on doing, but not anytime soon. It's not something that's like an immediate plan for the channel, but I was really excited to find this in the trash because it uh, it gives me something to uh, do. And to be completely honest about this, I didn't necessarily find it in the dumpster. I've now got a reputation for uh, dumpster diving, and uh, they mentioned that they were going to take it out there and that I, if I wanted it, I could carted out to the trash. So, uh, yeah, that's the, I am starting to catch a reputation at work for being, uh, the guy that fishes out all the broken equipment out of the trash. So, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.